So here is just a brief breakdown of the transformation. So the A value is going to be the vertical stretch factor, and it represents the uh, P is the horizontal translation, and Q is the vertical translation. So very much like our quadrax that we had before. The only difference is that the A is going to be for a linear slope as opposed to what we had for the quadratics. If A is greater than 1, then it looks taller compared to the original. If A is between 0 and 1, it looks wider, very similar to what we had before. And if A is less than 0, it's going to be reflected in the x-axis, which means that it's going to open down, very much like our quadratics. The mapping notation that we use is if the original had the points of x and y, the new one is going to be x plus p, and then a times y plus q. And the value of a also gives the absolute value of the slopes of the two linear functions that comprise the graph. So if it's the absolute value, remember that one of them is going to be the positive version of that slope, the other one is going to be the negative version of that slope. So if I am using this information to sketch the graph of y is equal to 3 and the absolute value of x plus 2 minus 4 using transformations, well, the first thing I'm going to state is that I have a vertex at negative 2 and negative 4. I have a vertical stretch of 3. So I'm going to start at my vertex, negative 2, negative 4. And then if I have a vertical stretch of 3, then that means that when I move to the right, I have a slope of 3, so up 3 over 1. When I'm moving to the left, I have a slope of negative 3, so up 3, left 1. And then I'm just going to expand out the graph. For example, 4, it wants us to write the equation y is equal to the absolute value of negative 2x minus 8 minus 3 in the form of y is equal to a bracket x minus p plus q, and then sketch the graph using the transformations. Well, I'm going to start by saying if y is equal to the absolute value of negative 2, and I'm going to factor the negative 2 out of both parts here, x plus 4 minus 3, then that's going to be the same as the absolute value of negative 2 multiplied by the absolute value of x plus 4 minus 3. The absolute value of negative 2 is going to be 2. And absolute value of x plus 4 minus 3. And now I can do the same thing. I have a vertex at negative 4 negative 3 and I have a stretch a vertical stretch by a factor of 2 so I'm going to go to negative 4, negative 3 Vertical stretch of positive 2 means it's going to open up, and I'm going to move up to right 1 or up to left 1 if it is I'm going to switch to negative. And there's my function, which we can always double check in the calculator to make sure that that works. All right. And the last thing we need to do is be able to actually figure out what the function would be. 
So in this case, I can see that I have a vertex at negative 2 and 0. I have another point over here where I can figure out the slope, where in this case, I went up by 1, make sure you're watching the scale there, and right by 1, 2, 3, 4, which means that I have a slope of or a vertical stretch of 1 over 4. That's enough information to write this out. I'm going to say that y is equal to 1 over 4 and the absolute value of x plus 2. And then I could state the plus 0, but it's redundant if the q value is 0. For the second case, I'm going to state that I have a vertex which occurs at 1 and 5 and then I have a slope here where I went up to rate 1 which means I have a slope of 2 over 1 or just 2 now, because this one opens down, I know that that a value is going to be negative as well. So I'm going to say that y is equal to negative 2. And the absolute value of x minus p, which is 1, plus q, which is 5. 